Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. We're doing it, guys. This is a pretty exciting launch. This is SpaceX launching. For the first time, SpaceX is reflying a rocket for the second time, making it the third time this rocket will launch. Uh, are you confused? Let me try again. This is the first time that SpaceX will fly a rocket for the third time. So in other words, it will refly twice now because the first time is a, a reflight. The first time is not a reflight. The first time is a flight, then reflight, then reflight, making this the third time this particular booster has flown. Now, this is the first time SpaceX has done this. And this is, uh, this is again, further furthering the proof of that pudding that, you know, hopefully everything's good to go as far as this whole reusability thing is obviously that's kind of the whole debate with um or wh why it's been kind of slow for other people to get on board is it's is it really worth the trouble of recovering these boosters is it really worth um you know is there a ton of refurbishment that has to happen with these rockets all this there's always all these questions and spacex's goal is to be able to rapidly Re reuse these rockets and so eventually someday they hope to be able to do a 24-hour turnaround where they land a rocket they do some simple checks on it and then they launch it again within 24 hours uh this one is was still a solid uh six or eight weeks since its last launch but let me go through uh i'll give you the rundown here as i as i like to say um by the way this liftoff time is is new i'm playing around with it it might not be super accurate but it, at least it'll help let you guys know if we're even uh, close. That, that's, that's an approximate T-minus time. Uh, I'm working on a better system, uh, but for now, just that's ish. Just so you guys don't have to ask, like, when's it launching? Hopefully, you can just look up there. Um, so here we go. These are my pre-launch previews. So if you are looking for just kind of the simple fact rundown on any upcoming launch, or most upcoming launches at least, uh, go to everydayastronaut.com slash pre-launch previews. And uh, here you go. You will get a rundown on what this is. So today, space... SpaceX is launching the Spaceflight SSOA, and for some reason I always say SSAO, SSOA, which is 64 different satellites. Um, we are going to be talking about what that means. We're going to be talking about um, a, a lot of stuff. So uh, there's a lot to go in here. This is one of those missions I'm going to listen in very closely because not only are they launching 64, space, 64 satellites on a third time reused rocket they're also hopefully trying to catch a fairing today too it looks like they actually sent mr steven out there to hopefully catch a fairing which is still a huge deal that has not happened yet um yeah i, I hear people saying my mic is is low i've got it at its normal normal problem um let me try i mean it's just the same as it's always been um let me know um uh, Discord. I'll, I'll let me know if you guys see anything going on. But here we go. So this might they might catch a fairing today. They might they will hopefully have the third um, third flight of a rocket. So that's great. <coughs> Excuse me. But here's the rundown on this thing. This is the Falcon 9 Block 5. Of course, that's all we're gonna see out of uh, Falcon 9s anymore. Block 5s. They're all done with Block 4s, except for maybe we might have one more for an in-flight launch abort. Um, but for now, Block 5 all the way. Um, so this is particular one is block B1046, and notice now there's a dot three. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, 1046.3. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, the launch is they're launching out of Vandenberg Air Force Base in California today, um, and it I think the weather's actually pretty nice for once. And luckily it is midday. That's definitely one like that marine layer, all that fog is definitely the best. Um, so yeah. Um, Oh, sorry. We had some kind of issue here. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, Mike is good. Mike is good. All right. Um, I'll keep going. Sorry. So then, uh, but yeah, the payload mass of this thing is about 4,000 kilograms, which is 8,800 pounds. That's pretty normal, uh, especially, that's actually pretty lightweight, really, when you consider that it's only going to uh, LEO, to low Earth orbit. But it is in a polar orbit, sun synchronous, sun -synchronous polar orbit, which means... They launch it so that the spacecraft are basically going like right on the sunset and and sunrise all the way around the planet so that they receive sunlight virtually the entire time. Um, let's see if and yes, and, and uh, MF uh, MF Austin says, will you finally get to post the fairing video if they actually do catch the fairing this time? Yes, I shot a video like four months ago in anticipation of them catching a fairing uh, talking about how they do it. I have it shot and like halfway edited and it's just sitting there in my library. 
I also have another video of a canceled Space Flight video part two that's shot and just sitting there waiting for me to edit it because I'm also working on like four other videos right now. This is like December is going to be my hardcore rundown on videos. You're going to get way too many like long produced videos. I'm working 80 hours a week right now just to cram as many of these things out as humanly possible. Um, but yeah, here we go. So sorry, I'll keep going. <laughs> Total distraction day. Uh, it will be landing on just read the instructions, the West Coast uh, drone ship. Uh, and then they are attempting to recover the fairing, which I said is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, they are not working on recovering second stage that we know of. That's been in flux, though, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Who knows? I wouldn't be. I, I don't think they're going to actually work on recoverability of the second stage. That's just my personal thought. I think what will happen would be uh, instead of recovering the second stage, I think they will use some parts of the second stage as, as technology demonstrators, uh, you know, for things like the heat shield and other things for for BFR. So um, let's see. <laughs> Sounds like NASA had some issues with their live stream today with the. Um, MS-11 launch. Um, okay, sorry. This will be the 60... I'm so distracted today. Sorry. Uh, this will be the 64th flight of a Falcon 9 rocket. The first time this booster has flown three times. The 18th reflight of a booster. The 19th mission for SpaceX this year, which is a new record. And hopefully they are flying tomorrow as well, making it 20. This is a big, big, big year for SpaceX. Um, this will be the 32nd landed core. Um, and here's a great infographic by Jeff. Uh, who's, his name's Jeff Barrett. He's been working on these. Uh, I reached out to him. He's now producing these for our website as well. So everyone say thanks to Jeff. Um, these are awesome. A quick little glimpse here. Again, if you just want to know, boom, 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 what's going on? Look at this. It's all right there. So everyone say thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, and then here you go. There's the rest of the article there. But I really wanted to take a quick look at this. Look at this. These are all the satellites flying on this particular mission. Thank you to SpaceX or to the SpaceX subreddit. Um, this is a really great rundown on all of the stinking. Look at this. This that's insane. I mean, what? Yeah, I, I can't even handle this. And now notice this is so since the 64, they obviously are going to be in some kind of uh, payload launchery thing that boop, 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 pops out kind of like a corn cob or something. Um, and my thought is this is probably going to be a similar technology demonstrator they'll be using when they start uh, launching Starlink. Now I'm just speculating there. I don't know if, if that's necessarily exactly right or not, uh, because Starlink might be bigger than a lot of these small and cube sets. Um, a lot of these are cube sets and, and the, I think I'm guessing that Starlink is bigger. So maybe my speculation just off the top of my head is completely wrong. But yeah, there you go. These are all the satellites. So congratulations to all 64 of these people. Look at all these countries, guys. This is truly an international effort. Australia, Brazil, Finland, Germany, India, Italy, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Netherlands, Poland, South Korea, Spain, Switzerland, Thailand, Canada, and then a bunch from the US too. So this is just crazy. Isn't that great, guys? Yeah, this is true. Ooh, good. Notice me, Senpai, has uh, a quick little fact drop. You're right. The uh, Indian Space Agency, ISRO, has launched 104 satellites, which I think is the, the world record as far as most satellites in one launch. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's If you see the video, it's just like boop, 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 boop. They're just shooting out satellites left and right, which is crazy. Uh, I love that. So, yeah. So the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, still has the world record for the most uh, satellites launched in a single, um, yeah. The 64th launch, you're right, is it the 64th launch with 64 satellites? It's like candles, guys. I didn't even realize that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, 64, uh, 64th flight with 64 satellites. What a crazy coincidence. Um, all right, I got to get to some of your guys' comments here. Um, thank you so much for all, uh, to, uh, hi, hey there, thank you, and Primus81, and, uh, Benny and Gaming, is Tesla making an electric car for Mars colonists? That would make a lot of sense, um, obviously, if you are, uh, you know, if you're on a, a planet with no, uh, breathable atmosphere and or, uh, a not, uh, an atmosphere with no oxidizer, you can't use an internal combustion engine, so you have to use electric motors, and Tesla knows a thing or two about electric motors and batteries, um, so yes, I would absolutely guess that at some point we'll see some brand, branded Tesla thing that is a rover on Mars and maybe even the moon. 
uh, it would just make sense. Don't forget that GM actually, uh, GM built the the lunar, uh, the little lunar rover. Um, so you know, it there's already been uh, U.S. car companies that have driven around on other celestial bodies. So uh, I think space or the Tesla would make sense for them to follow suit. I would love to see that. I think we'd all love to see that. Uh, Michael Burke, you're thrilled about reusable rockets beyond belief. Watching the boosters land is a, is a dream come true every time. I couldn't disagree. Wait, I couldn't agree more. Yes. Uh, it, it's still, every time I watch it, I'm just like, are you kidding me? That is like the coolest thing ever. Uh, it still gives me shivers. And this one, by the way, they're landing really close to land this time. So um, unfortunately, I think the actual landing, uh, it, co it could have and should have had, it has plenty of margins to land back on land at a, uh, at LZ4, I believe. Is it LZ3 or LZ4 that they're calling it on the West Coast? I already forgot. They've only landed there once. Um, they could have, and they have plenty of margin to do that, but uh, people are kind of speculating that there's a really expensive DOD rocket out at the pad, or it's a Delta IV Heavy that's going to be launching a DOD mission with a really, like, a billion-dollar satellite on the base. So they kind of said to SpaceX, hey, I know you're really good at landing these rockets, but we can't risk having a 20 ton, <laughs> like 20 story tall ballistic missile falling anywhere near our billion dollar payload. Um, so they have, they basically have them landing like west, like a little bit southwest off the coast. So, um, yeah, so I still, this would be a good one. We should actually hopefully be able to maintain some kind of uplink maybe uh, with a good landing. So we, we might not see the video cut out today. I probably just cursed it because I'll bet. It's like just on the fringe or something, uh, but maybe we'll see a full-blown uplink. Um, and thank you, Carlos and Joshua M. You were down in Lompoc yesterday for lunch, but had uh, had to head home for, from work today. You listened to my music on the road trip and back. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Joshua M. That means so much. Uh, yeah, for those of you that don't uh, know, I did finally get you. You've all been asking the intro and outro and all the music and all my videos has always been original music, and people have forever uh, been asking me to put it up online. I had it on SoundCloud for a while, but people were like, when is it going to be on Spotify and iTunes and stuff? It's finally on Spotify and iTunes. So if you look up Everyday Astronaut, the album's called Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure. It's seven songs for now. There's going to be a lot more, another uh, more chill album. This one's kind of the like road trippy album. The next one's going to be like the even more chill, super, super chill uh, ambient music. But this one's a little bit more. The, the intro and the outro music are both on this. So give that a little, little check out next time. You guys are, are bored. Um, that's a good idea, Matthew. Turn your pre-roll video down so then the stuff won't be so crazy. Good call. I will do that. Um, ooh, T-minus adjusted slightly now, aiming for 1034, so that'll be... Oh, I'll just keep my left-off timer the same until <laughs> it's good enough. Um, and, uh, Kirisu, thank you. Uh, it blew my mind last night when I realized there were four launches within uh, 48 hours. You're right. So that's... Thank you so much, uh... Um, Elsai K uh, Kongru, thank you very much. And you're right. So today, did the MS-11 launch go off? I didn't even, I didn't even have a chance to look. There was supposed to be a Soyuz launch, the first Soyuz launch today since, uh, they had the abort, what was that, two months ago now. They're already back at it, uh, sending three astronauts, well, two astronauts and a cosmonaut, I believe. Uh, someone, if, if someone, uh, <laughs> uh, someone in Discord, if you guys wouldn't mind shooting me a, a link, with an article, I'll throw it up there. Um, there we go, MSF, MS-11 went off perfectly, docked to the ISS an hour ago? They did, they gotta do that direct, wow! <sighs> so sometimes, uh, the Soyuz is capable of, of a more direct ascent, I believe it's only a four hour from launch to, to docking, which is really, really impressive, uh, because sometimes those things can take like two days almost. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. I would love, if you guys could shoot me, oh yeah, so then, we also have Osiris Rex, which is a little uh, little probe that's going to go and, and kiss an asteroid, the asteroid Bennu. Uh, it arrived today, so that's another huge space thing. Um, so congrats, NASA, on that. <laughs> then tomorrow we have a, uh, another SpaceX launch and an Ariane 5 launch. There's like five big space things, and holy cow, SpaceX is live, I'm hearing. I'll get it pulled up here. All right, we're going to go like this. We'll be kind of watching that in the background. Um Two Chinese launches and a Delta IV Heavy from Vandenberg coming up. You're right, man. Four orbits, six hours. Thank you, Andy Law. Uh, yeah, four 
four orbits, which is six hours. Dang, guys, it is space week. It is space week. Let me see if, um, can you guys hear that desktop audio at all? We'll kind of roll it in a little bit here. Dang, um, yeah. So the uh, so thank you again. And David, yes, the Soyuz did dock as we as we talked about. Also, it's a pretty uh, mental time for space news and launches. Yes, I am going to be plenty busy. Although you guys hopefully know this by now, I'm working on training you guys that I'm not necessarily staying on top of the news. There's plenty of websites and great journalists that are on top of news for you. I'm getting back to my roots, which is what I love doing like those this versus that, or really doing deep dives onto certain particular topics. Um, I just released my, my favorite video I've done in a long time. Uh, I'm working on a whole series called Cancelled, and this particular one is, uh, the series has been about um, things that like are really for, like far along to develop and then cancelled. So we're gonna be doing two about space hardware that actually flew, like got to space, and then it was cancelled. The next one's about stuff that was hardware was developed but never made it to space. And then we're doing another one about really cool concepts and abilities that spacecraft have, like the Dragon Propulsive Landing. And we're also, I think, gonna do one that's like too crazy and didn't work, never made it off the napkin type of thing. Um, which of course will be like the, the Rotan rotary helicopter thing and like Sea Dragon and stuff like that. Um, those are gonna go in that one. You guys ask about those ones a lot. Um, so we're gonna finally do that, so. Um, yeah, so again, if you want your actual space news, you can check my website, everydayastronaut.com. We do have a couple contributors that help uh, get some of this news out to you right away. Um, by the way, I'm gonna make sure that we are in 1080. Why does it do that? I don't want no 480. What is this? What is this, Cabbage Town? Um, yeah, so if you want your space news, uh, I'm not gonna be the guy that's like, I'm gonna rush to the computer and let you know that MS-11 went off perfectly. There's plenty of people that, uh, journalists that do that stuff full time that do it way better than me. Um, and also I, I'm, I fear rumor milling. Like I don't, like when there was that, that Soyuz abort um, a month and a half ago, you know, people were coming to me, Tim, why are you talking about it? I'm like, I don't know what there is to talk about. You know, I, I can't tell you anything. I don't have any facts. And I really like to be as pedantic as possible um, and not just speculate and rumor mill. Um, so I, I want, if something comes out of my mouth, I want it to be uh, as close to accurate as I can, as I can guarantee. Uh, I, I like to spend a lot of time digging into stuff and making sure it's right before it comes out. Um, and so when it's something like there's a sudden news break, I might speculate on it a little bit depending on stuff, but I, I don't come to me for that stuff. Um, again, there's other people that are much, much better at that. Uh, NASA space flight, for example, does an amazing job, uh, being able to break down that stuff. Scott Manley does an amazing job of being able to like right away, break some of that stuff down. Um, that's just not, that's just not my, my, that's not my like mm, forte. Um, so yeah. So and Kevin, thank you. My thank you. He says my music's incredible. I really appreciate that. Means a lot. Um, Alamar, I'll miss y'all tomorrow. You'll be at the Cape for CRS 16 launch. Ooh, enjoy, enjoy the view. That's awesome. Uh, I'll be out there. I think in January. Uh, I th I plan to attend DM1. Uh, if so, I'll probably try to do some kind of meetup. And yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll definitely let patrons, if you are a Patreon supporter, um, those people always get um, some exclusive access to uh, an exclusive Patreon meetup. So if you want to meet up and you happen to be going to DM1 or you'll be in Florida in January, pay attention. Uh, check on Patreon. And I might do some public meetup as well, depending on my schedule and stuff. So yeah. Good luck at the out of the Cape. I'm jealous. Oh, here we go. And Royal Gaming. Hi and thank you. Hey buddy, can you please not try to drop your super space telescope pole on my <laughs> sat? Absolutely. And Rhonda, thank you. I'll read that in a second. Thank you very much. And also Johan. Um, yes, I can tell you that. We will get to that stuff in the break. Uh, remind me. And also Rhonda, thank you so much. Your son really likes my content. Thank you. You added your tunes to your phone. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to this, guys. Good morning from SpaceX headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. This morning's Falcon 9 launch is scheduled for 10.34 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 18.34 Universal Coordinated Time. Our launch window is just under 25 minutes long and closes at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. I'm Lauren Lyons, a senior engineer in our flight reliability department, and welcome to the webcast for the Spaceflight SSS, sorry, SSOA Small, Small Sat Express mission. For this mission, we are flying a record 64 satellites for our customer spaceflight. This is the largest number of payloads ever launched from a US-based rocket. This flight is also particularly exciting for SpaceX for another reason. 
we'll be flying this Falcon 9 booster for the third time. Now, this is the first time we've ever done this, which we'll talk more about later on in the webcast. Following the liftoff, we have two recovery attempts. First, we are attempting to land Falcon 9's first stage on our autonomous spaceport drone ship, Just Read the Instructions, which is situated in the ocean 50 kilometers away from the launch pad. The second recovery attempt will be to catch our payload fairing with a large net on our boat, Mr. Steven, Please give us as that, that feed. fairing descends down over the Pacific Ocean after separating from the second stage. Please give us that. Feed. And if you've been following us closely, you know that we're still early in our fairing catching efforts, but maybe today will be the day that we net one for the first time. And finally, exactly. once Falcon 9 reaches its intended orbit, the 64 satellites will be released in six separate deployments starting at around T plus 14 minutes and ending approximately 43 minutes after liftoff. Now, because all of the deployments take place over areas of the globe where we do not have ground station coverage, there will be no live video feed of the spacecraft deployments on today's webcast. So we'll wrap it up right after shutdown of the second stage engine, approximately 10 minutes after launch. However, we will be posting updates on Twitter about the deployments starting at when we regain ground station coverage around an hour later. Now let's take a look at Falcon 9 on Pat's Space Launch Complex 4 as we count down to liftoff. Hi, I'm Kate Tice and I'm a program reliability engineer here at SpaceX. We're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket at our West Coast launch site, Space Launch Complex 4 East or Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is just a couple hours north of where I'm standing here at our headquarters in Los Angeles. Falcon 9 you see here is 70 meters tall, which is just over 21 stories high, and most notably, our first stage is covered in soot. As Lauren mentioned, this is the first time that SpaceX will be flying a Falcon 9 for the third time. So all of this that you see here is from not one, but two previous re-entry missions. Multiple reuse is being supported by our Block 5 upgrades that we debuted earlier this year. Uh, our Block 5 rockets are designed to be capable of 10 or more flights with no scheduled refurbishment. In fact, this stage that you see here previously supported the Bangabadu 1 mission in May of this year, which was our first Block 5 fight, flight, and that was then followed by the Mira Puti mission that was this past August. With a successful launch this morning, this booster will have launched from each of SpaceX's three launch, launch pads, Slick 40 and Launch Complex 39A, which are our two pads at Cape Canaveral in Florida, and now Slick 4 East at Vandenberg, uh, which makes today's mission the very first SpaceX launch pad hat trick. So in our 17 foot in diameter fairing here, we have 64 satellites. Um, as mentioned, this fairing will be, we will be attempting to recover it um, today. Hopefully today we can actually manage to snag it. Uh, this attempt we will be aiming to catch it and recover the fairing in the super size net that you see there uh, on our recovery <laughs> ship so called big. Mr. Steven. That's currently stationed in place out in the Pacific Ocean in preparation for today's attempt. Now we are early in our efforts to recover our fairings and if today is not successful we will continue to iterate until we get it right. The Falcon 9 and spacecraft teams are currently working no issues as we count down to liftoff in just over 10 minutes. At T minus one hour, the satellites were transferred to internal power, meaning they were no longer drawing power from the ground. And Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes. Our fuel, RP-1, which is a rocket grade kerosene, is now fully loaded on the second stage. And RP-1 load on the first stage will close out six minutes before launch. Super chilled liquid oxygen, that's our fuel's oxidizer, is currently loading on both stages and will close out on stage one and stage two at T minus three minutes and two minutes, respectively. The next major activity, which is happening at T minus seven minutes, is engine chill. This is when we open up the valves between the first stage propellant tanks and the nine Merlin engines in order to chill in the turbo pumps. We do this in order to make sure that when that full flow of super cold liquid oxygen hits them at liftoff, there is minimal temperature difference, which avoids thermal shock to the hardware. The white truss structure next to the rocket, known as the transporter erector, or sometimes called the TE or strongback, it not only transports Falcon 9 from the hangar to the pad and raises it from horizontal to vertical, but it also routes fluids, powers, and telemetry lines to Falcon 9 and to the payload. At about T minus four and a half minutes, we will retract the TE away from the rocket slightly, providing clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. Now regarding liftoff conditions, the range is currently green for launch, 
and we are tracking no weather constraints going into T0. The last weather balloon or wind balloon was released some time ago and the upper altitude winds and ground winds are currently within loads limits. Today's mission is for our customer spaceflight. With 64 payloads being sent to space, Spaceflight SSOA SmallSat Express is an exciting mission. These include 15 microsats and 49 cubesats from both commercial and government entities from a total of 17 countries. This morning's mission will be headed to sun-synchronous low Earth orbit, which is what SSO stands for in the mission name. Sun-synchronous orbits travel over the Earth's poles as the planet rotates underneath, with the satellite passing over a particular section of the Earth at the same time each day. Sun-synchronous orbits provide a constant amount of sunlight, which makes them especially good for imaging satellites, of which there are several on today's flight. Let's check out this clip from Spaceflight with more info about today's payloads. Good, I wanted to get an idea. There's so many things on this particular launch. At Spaceflight, our mission is to make space accessible to all. We provide the most opportunities to anyone on the planet for small sats to get to orbit. The rideshare model makes space really accessible to everyone. This model lowers the barriers to entry for people that want to get small sats on orbit. And this enables all kinds of new business plans to come to fruition by really enabling lower cost launch for everyone. The SSOA mission was all about getting small sats on orbit. They've historically been relegated to the secondary payloads. We decided to fill a whole Falcon 9 with small sats, making it cost effective and therefore enabling new technologies taking an unprecedented number of first-time flyers up. We've got startups, ongoing businesses, space agencies, museums, universities, even a middle school aboard. Missions themselves vary from tech demonstrators to Earth observation, communications, to biological experiments. Spacecraft come from 17 different countries represent the work of thousands of people. A mission this size with 64 spacecraft takes years of planning and draws on our deep expertise in launch. Our engineers designed two rings, the upper and lower free flyers, that will separate and deploy their spacecraft in a series of orchestrated maneuvers. Because we have launched over 140 satellites to date, we've experienced with nearly every different SEP system and dispenser and are always ready with custom solutions to deployment problems. Our engineers and mission managers were fully up to the challenge of a dedicated mission. Assembling the integrated stack was like putting together a giant complex puzzle. It was a master effort in project planning, ingenuity, and perseverance that took place in our new state-of-the-art integration facility in Auburn, Washington. Our team also worked with our customers to navigate all the regulatory, licensing, and insurance challenges that come with putting a spacecraft on orbit, particularly for our first-time flyers, making sure that everything is running smoothly as part of the turnkey service our mission managers provide. Finally, I'd like to say this would not have been possible without SpaceX and the incredible capabilities of the Falcon 9. We all envision a world where small sats are really making a difference. All kinds of applications, Earth observation, new lunar missions, space manufacturing, stuff we can't even dream about. We really want to say how grateful we are to Planet for being the primary on this mission, for SpaceX for enabling it to happen, and for all of our customers that are sharing this ride with us. As we mentioned, there are 64 satellites on board today. One of these payloads is part of a collaboration between the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, or LACMA, and artist Tavares Strachan called Enoch. Enoch highlights the story of Robert Henry Lawrence Jr., the first African-American astronaut. Lawrence passed away in 1967 in an airplane accident during astronaut training, and he was never able to realize his dream of going to space. The artist sought to honor this legacy by creating a 24 karat gold canopic jar, which is the same shape of jars used in ancient Egyptian mummifications. The jar has been mounted with Lawrence's bust on its top, as you can see there. The Enoch sculpture will be sent to orbit, and once in space, it will circle the Earth for seven years before deorbiting. SpaceX is a founding sponsor of LACMA's Art and Technology Lab, which sponsored the development of this project. We're now heading into the final countdown, so let's get a status update on the rocket. That is awesome. With just a few minutes to go before liftoff, everything is looking good on Falcon 9. Full fuel is fully loaded on both stages, and LOX is getting there as well. At T-minus one and a half minutes, we will start vehicle gas closeouts. That's completion of all helium and nitrogen gas loading, and the closing of all the valves to those systems. Around that time, you'll also see a large cloud of white gas coming out of the TE. 
this is expected. This is us venting out the liquid oxygen lines in, on the TE into the air, making sure that excess oxidizer isn't in the path of Falcon 9's plume at liftoff. At T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will go into startup. You'll hear that on the countdown net. This is when the vehicle stops listening to requests from the ground, other than an abort, of course, and instead is controlled by the flight computer from then on through launch. Now, as a reminder, if anyone calls a hold on the launch today, we will try again at a later date. Falcon 9 and the payload are currently tracking no issues. The weather is go, the winds are go, and the range is green for an on-time launch today. Now, with three minutes to go, let's listen in on the countdown nets. Um, a few fun facts here. Don't forget the West Coast launch pad, the Slick 4E, has the old that style. That better purchase started. Uh, transport director, which only re retracts to like 77 and a half Stage degrees. one locks low and it's closed um, up. The new ones, both of them on the East Coast, actually quickly retract to almost 45 degrees right at T minus zero, just falls back. Um, that means this one requires more refurbishment. So the exhaust of the rocket ends up kind of pummeling the, the transport director quite a bit here. You know, uh, imagine if it was going like this, all the, all the rocket exhaust is going to kind of go right onto the the transport director there. Um, the, like I said, the new ones fall away, getting some of those lines, the, the, the top off lines that, that fill up, or the, the umbilicals that fill up all the fuel and provide power and stuff. Um, the new ones get that out of the way sooner um, so that the rocket doesn't damage as much, requiring a lot less refurbishment. Um, now the other thing people have been asking you guys, don't forget, um, yes, this rocket is extremely dirty and that's awesome. To me, that's like the ultimate, this is, this is it showing its battle scars, literally from re-entry. It's, it's re-entered the atmosphere twice, and you're seeing not only soot. Uh, I asked Elon uh, on Twitter, and he said that it's it's not just soot, uh, it's also scorch marks, um, which is, you can't really remove. Stage two locks load is closed up. I do want to know why we still see pinstriping that they appear to do. Uh, I th they must run some kind of machine that, that checks, like, x-ray or something of the fuselage to make sure everything's okay, because um, there are pinstripes down the side of the rocket. Um, and like right, I don't know if you guys can see my, my cursor there, right there you see kind of a weird zigzag pattern. So they are able to, in some ways, remove um, some stuff, uh, probably for some form of inspections. Now what you're seeing here is excess oxygen being vented um, and purged into the atmosphere. Um, and then when really cold liquid oxygen is turning into a gas, again, it expands a lot, but it's also still really cold. That comes into contact with the condensation in the air. Um, which then makes basically little clouds that you see. Um, so yeah, so this, again, is super dirty, and that's indicative of its third flight. So this is Falcon a nice. really exciting one, guys. I, this this is my one of my favorite missions of this year so far, and it hasn't even launched yet, but I can't believe they have a camera on Mr. Steven Stage for us. Stage two is pressing for flight. They so must be pretty confident. One. They did practice like launch. 10. Hang on, I'm gonna listen here. They did like 10 drop tests recently with a, a fairing half. And for now, they're only trying to catch one half of a fairing. Once they figure out how to catch one half, I'm sure they'll probably uh, employ the same system. But no point in trying to miss, you know, catching two until they Gas know they can catch one. Closeouts are complete. And don't forget, guys, I will be answering all your, your questions and your Super Chat stuff um, and talking after the, the end of this. Stage one, pressing for launch. So stand by. T minus 15 seconds. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's see it three times, Nine. baby. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, Rainbirds. three, two, one. Yes! We'll lift off of the Falcon 9. I feel like I sat there for an extra second. I was like, oh, it's going to go forward today. Oh, beautiful day at Vandenberg. Wow. That is a cool shot. flight of the Falcon 9 rocket. That's a lot of flights. This is the third flight of this particular booster. So normally, you know, if you say like an Atlas V rocket's flown no, 100 no, times no, or something, phenomenal. those are 100 different rockets. This is the 64th flight of the Falcon 9 overall. The Falcon design. 9 has cleared the tower and is now headed upward on its mission to sun-synchronous low Earth orbit. Coming up, the rocket will throttle down for Max-Q, 
which, rep reach maximum aerodynamic pressure. which represents the maximum aerodynamic stress on the rocket. We're now headed into a series of events that will occur in rapid succession. That's MIGO, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start one. MIGO is the shutdown of all nine first stage engines in preparation for stage separation, where stage two separates from stage one, and SES-1 is the ignition of the second stage engine. And back chill has begun. Following SES-1, we will turn our attention back to the returning first stage, which will relight three of its engines in a boost back burn to head back towards the drone ship. And then finally, we'll see ferried fairing deployment at T plus two minutes and 43 seconds. As mentioned earlier in this webcast, we're attempt attempting to recover the payload fairing. And while we will not have a live video feed of this attempt, we'll share updates as they become available. Beautiful view. So in about 20 seconds, you'll hear the call out from Miko. Let's listen in. So yes, I to answer you guys' questions, this is landing today, um, just off the coast, actually. Um, so we'll be doing a boost back burn an entry burn, and then the landing burn. So we'll do three burns today. Oh, that's so cool. Main engine cutoff. Way up, Miko. That is awesome. And as you just saw, we had a successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, as well as Ignition of that second stage engine. And there goes that fairing. And there you can see all 64 okay. of Let's those satellites those on stage two headed to sun synchronous orbit. We'll see you on Mr. Steven in a second, fairings. Let's do this. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, man. You will hear the call out for the boost back burn ending in a couple of seconds. That's where stage one's burn that brings it back in the direction of the drone ship. That burn will, that burn will cease. It has ended because the cables are now floating before they're experiencing acceleration and kind of being pinned stage down. Two trajectory nominal. And we are hearing that the stage two trajectory is nominal and performing as desired. You can see those beautiful grid fins popping up on the left side on stage one as it makes its way back down to the drone ship. Where are my grid fins? MVAC D's power is nominal. That burn is looking very good. This is, I don't know what it is about this one. This one already just, it's such a beautiful time of day. We're, we're getting spoiled by a bunch of daytime launches lately. So now don't forget, right now the, the booster is actually flying back towards the, the landing Stage site. Stage two, MVAC D engine continues to look good. Temperatures and chamber pressures remain nominal. So yeah, so they're, they're heading back towards the landing site, but they're not going to land back. We have back beautiful views of the Earth from both stages. That is so cool. So yeah, again, this is now what? Coming up on almost 200 miles in altitude for those of us that are metrically impaired. Uh, but yeah. So just a quick recap in case if you have just joined us. We just had a beautiful liftoff from Vandenberg Air Force Base, uh, our West Coast launch site in California, followed by amazing footage of stage separation, main engine cutoff first, then stage S separation. And we see the second engine um, there ignited and carrying our payloads into the proper orbit. Now on the left side of your screen there, you see our first stage, which is coming back down to planet Earth uh, as we're hoping to land it on our drone ship uh, this morning. So coming up in just a few seconds, we'll be initiating the re-entry burn. Uh, this is designed to slow the rocket down as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. Then just a couple minutes later, we'll perform the final burn, also known as the landing burn, and that will decelerate the vehicle to a gentle landing atop of our drone ship. 
Go. So there's the visual confirmation of that re-entry burn. Oh, that's an awesome shot. I love these return to long set wings because they can actually keep good tracking shots like this. <laughs> Just riding on a wave, surfing down through the atmosphere. And this is one of the reasons why it gets so dirty. This will last for another 10 seconds. Look at that. And burnout. <laughs> oh. Awesome shot. Okay, so now that re-entry burn has ended, we have less than a minute until that third and final landing burn will happen, followed by Stage touchdown. One has <laughs> so the first stage is still falling back. Now the atmosphere is getting thicker and thicker. So those now as we uh, approach our first stage landing, I'd like to point out that we might lose video coverage uh, out there on our drone ship. There's lots of vibrations as the rocket is coming down towards it, so we might lose our satellite signal. Uh, if this is the case, we'll be sure to provide you status updates on that first stage as they become available. Uh, we're certainly excited to hear about it here in Hawthorne as, um, and across all of SpaceX as this is the third time, the first time that we have are trying to land us for a third time. So there we can see that final landing burn happening. That's a beautiful we'll be looking shot. for deployment of the landing legs here Good momentarily. Morning. They have plenty of time to do a landing burn on this one. This one has plenty of margin. <laughs> Nailed it. So as you can hear yes. from the crowd cheers here, Falcon 9 has touched down for the third time. It's the first time this has happened. First time for the third time. Every time. <laughs> so as you saw in that shot, Falcon 9 landed on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which is currently out in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> That's so great. And the first, the second stage is still continuing on with the primary mission, though. We are uh, eight minutes and 32 seconds into flight, and the second stage is still burning nominally. It's on a really good trajectory. Power is looking good. Chamber pressures are good. And we're looking at 200,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space with that engine. What's that in mega newtons? Kilonewtons. I don't remember. I think it's like... We have a little chart because I'm talking about how much thrust this has compared to the BE. So the second engine cutoff, or SECO, that's where we're going to stop burning this engine because ideally Falcon 9 will be in its intended deployment orbit. Orbit that's coming up in about 50 seconds. So as we mentioned earlier, we won't be able to show the deployments of the satellites today because this will be happening, uh, that will be taking place okay. over areas where we don't have ground station coverage. So unfortunately, we won't have any live video feed to provide. Um, because deployment won't be viewable, we will end our live webcast oh, okay. soon after the second engine cutoff. But please continue to follow along on SpaceX Twitter updates for payload deployment as they become available. All right, oh. we should be expecting Seco, and there it is. Let's Seco. listen in for whether or not the orbit's good. <laughs> That's the important part, the actual mission. And we have confirmation that stage two has reached a good orbit. This is the deployment orbit, and the next step over the course of the next 40 minutes or so is to separate the payloads from the second stage of Falcon 9. <laughs> and with that, we have reached the conclusion of our webcast today. Please continue to follow on on SpaceX Twitter for real-time updates on the rest of this mission, including deployment of the satellites on board today. Thank you to our customer Spaceflight for entrusting us with today's launch, and to the United States Air Force's 30th Space Wing for range support. And a special thanks to the FCC, the NTIA, and NASA Spectrum Office for helping making today's flight possible. Be sure to continue to follow along with future SpaceX milestones. Uh, check out our website and social media feeds. Also. 
be sure to check us out for our next flight, CRS-16, a NASA cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. And that's currently targeted for tomorrow, December 4th, at 1.38 p.m. Eastern out of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Hey, we're busy. And with that, from, here, from all of us here at SpaceX, have a great day. Good job, SpaceX. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to tune this down for a second. I'm going to pull up their Twitter feed here in a minute. And I'm going to answer a couple of your guys' questions because we have a lot of things to kind of regurgitate here for a second. Um, I'm actually going to keep their stream up in the background just in case, who knows, just in case they catch a fairing and they pop back on and they're like, hey, look, look at this live shot of the fairing. Oh, they ended it. <laughs> so never mind. I guess we're not going to do that. Um, but meanwhile, I will get um, – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up their Twitter feed and basically have a, uh, a full-blown – give me one second here. I've got to kind of clean this up. Um, let's see here. Let me get a new thing going, and then we'll, we'll watch the Twitter feed together. How about that? Um, but give me one second. We have a lot of questions to answer, like I said – um, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do this for a while. Why not? We're just going to sit and now watch the Twitter feed. SpaceX. Oh, uh, yes. So here we go. Let's let's just look at maybe tweets and replies. No, maybe just tweets. Um, but yeah, we're just going to watch this. This is our, our what we'll be able to at least take home with us now. So uh, I really hope that they talk about fairing recovery. If so, I'll have a video out about that really soon. Um, okay, so first off, thank you guys for tuning in here. Uh, that really means a lot. We have a lot of questions to answer, a lot of fun things to talk about. Um, and I just really quick before we move on, I wanted to thank my Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys have made this little hobby of mine turn into a significant and legitimate career. So thank you so much. Um, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without the support of my Patreon supporters. I have so many in-depth videos. One, I have 30 pages of script for a series that I've been working on for months, and I wouldn't have the ability to sit and work late nights doing this stuff if it wasn't for the support of my Patreon supporters. So if you want to help me do what I do, please go to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Lots of videos coming out in de December. You're going to get sick of videos coming out in December. I hope to have a ton of videos out so that if you're on a some kind of holiday break, you can sit and enjoy and binge on way too much content. And it's really good content. I'm really excited about it. It's stuff that I've been wanting to talk about forever. So um, so thank you to my Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And also before we move on, um, t while talking about uh, the holiday season. I do want to one quick mention and then we'll move on. Uh, everydayastronaut.com slash shop. I have a brand new web store with lots of amazing things. I couldn't be more excited about this. Uh, we are done with the Buran, the Buran shirts. Those are sold out and done. They will be shipping here uh, by the end of this week to all, all of you who uh, ordered one of those. But we still have things like grid fanatic coasters. We're trying really hard to keep these in stock. So the, you might not get them before the holiday season if you're looking to purchase the Grid Finata coasters. Um, they keep selling out constantly, but we do have some new shirts. And a quick note, if you work at an aerospace company and you want any kind of apparel, so if you click on apparel, all anything that's apparel in my website, um, you if you work in the aerospace industry, you can take 25% off anytime. Um, what you do is you click down here to receive 25% off. You insert, you have to insert an approved email address, like, you know, at NASA, at SpaceX, at Boeing, wherever. Um, and then it'll send you a code to take 25% off all apparel on my website. That's my thank you to you for working so hard and for inspiring me to do what I'm doing. Um, speaking of ASDS, I do have a new shirt out just in time uh, for the holidays. This is me sitting inside uh, kind of the, the landing pad a little. Shout out to the ASDS. So I have a ton of new stuff. Check back often. We're going to be doing a lot of exclusive things, um, a lot of cool things before the holiday season. So um, thank you for those of you who have supported via the shop as well. So everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Lots of cool stuff. So let's get back to this Twitter feed. I'm just going to pull this up again and have it ready. But we have questions to answer. All right. So, um, <laughs> so okay, we have to go all the way back to – so, again, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you again so much for for saying that you that you're checking out my music. That means a ton. I can't tell you that that makes me so happy. I've seen uh, a lot of people showing me them listening to music and my uh, listening to my music in their cars and stuff. That feels really really good. So thank you so much um, for for checking that out. Um, yeah, uh, Johan, can you tell me why SLS is taking so much time? Yes, I can. To be perfectly honest, 
here's my opinion on this matter. Um, SLS is still functioning in kind of an old fashion. It's cost plus contracting. And so NASA as the prime contractor then hires companies to basically do the work and then they pay them whatever it costs plus some profit so that the company, the private company, say Lockheed Martin or Boeing, can still make money, you know, on on their work and they're not just working for free. The problem is there's no incentive to get the work done quickly or costly, to be honest. Um, I did a video about this uh, really in depth. I, there's a two-part series. You have to watch both parts. Please don't be the person that says, this video is not fair. It's like, you watched part two. You didn't watch part one. Watch part one and two of SpaceX versus NASA. Is that even a fair question? We talk all about the, the kind of how cost plus contracting works. Uh, we talk all about, I'm going to do this because that's Twitter feeds, not a ton to look at right now. Um, but we talk all about cost plus contracting. We talk all about how um, the, the, how NASA has been working with new incentivized programs like the crew com commercial crew and commercial cargo resupply. But basically, SLS has been, I think it could have worked out great if they had done some kind of bidding scheme at the beginning. Like, here's what we need. We need to put 120 tons into low Earth orbit. Uh, we need that to happen in the next six years or whatever. Now, who's going to submit a, 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 you know, some kind of contract or some kind of proposal and then shopped it out and taken the, the best of that. Now, unfortunately, uh, they kind of were like, hey, we have all these shuttle components. We have the RS-25 main engine off the space shuttle. We have these solid rocket boosters off the space shuttle. Let's reuse some of that and basically make a new a new vehicle. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that's... That, to me, is the main reason. So trying to reuse that is a really inefficient way of building a rocket. Um, it doesn't promote um, innovation. It literally is like, hey, use the old stuff because it's sitting around. And so, yeah, it it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Uh, yeah. I, I'm. That being said, I'm really excited for um, some of the other new heavy launchers coming out. I talk a lot about New Glenn in an upcoming video that I hope to have out this week. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, bite-sized, uh, what am I looking for when using a launch tracking app? Um, I want, I need to make sure that uh, there's the local time of the launch, UTC time of the launch, and your time, wherever you are geolocated. Those are definitely the best features of a launch tracking app, um, if that's what you mean by launch tracking app. And thank you. Plastic Pinocchio, we talk about the Italian company Avio and their Vega launcher. I'm not very familiar with the... Uh, this isn't like the Vega as in like with Ariane Space, right? I've never heard of AVO, to be honest. And they're building a Raptor analog methane engine called the M10. Awesome performances and reliability for only $39 million. I don't know too much about this. I'll believe it when I see it. And that's a, uh, like that's a positive skepticism. Not like, oh, I believe it when I see it. I hope that they do. This is great. That's obviously great news if they do. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'm excited. I'll read into it uh, if it... If it trips my trigger and seems like something beyond a paper rocket and beyond um, just a bunch of spreadsheets, then I'll definitely consider doing a video on it. I don't like doing videos on things that are just proposals because proposals, there's a billion proposals as, as I'm working on these canceled videos that, that we're talking about. Uh, the canceled videos is full, chock full of like ideas, but getting them out to the launch pad is a totally different thing. Those are, that's like saying I'm running a marathon and you've walked six steps is the proposal. Uh, getting to the end of the marathon and finishing walking across the finish line, that's a whole other thing. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll look into it, and if it really makes it past that uh, very initial stage, otherwise I'd spend the rest of my career just talking about proposals. So um, didn't they already launch one a third time? No, they have never launched the same booster for the third time. So this was the first. This was the first. And, Michael, you did call it early. You nailed it. Thank you, Michael. Um, on the second stage, why does it look like uh, one angle, like the engine's pointing sideways, the other angle, like it's almost pointing straight down? Great question. So, the cameras on the upper stage are extremely wide angle. Think of them, think of them like a GoPro. Um, as a matter of fact, they are not rectilinear. It means um, they do have some barrel distortion. Uh, this is coming from a professional photographer. This is what I used to do: is talk about all this kind of nerdy stuff. Um, but you know how, like a GoPro, if you were to take a straight line, you were to move it up and down, that line will become curved on either side of the uh, at the top and the bottom of the frame. That's the same thing we're experiencing here too. Um, these images get quite distorted at the at the wide angles. And not only that, it's really hard. This this bell would not, the, the vacuum bell from this engine, from the, uh, the Merlin upper stage engine, wouldn't fit in this room. It's so big. And so the camera 
uh, they a might be pointing kind of 90 degrees to each other. That, that might be the reason that the orientation in the frame looks different, but also it's just really hard to have the proper perspective on what we're actually looking at when you're dealing with wide angles and an item that is so big, it's hard to fathom how big it is. You know, it's, it's one of those things that, that, that is like 3.5 meters wide. It's like 14 feet wide or something crazy. No, 10 feet wide, 11 feet wide in diameter at the end of that nozzle. It is so big. It's hard to fathom. Therefore, a lot of those here, let's see if we can see a picture. Uh, it's just hard here. I'll, I'll pull this up bigger. Um, it's really, really, really hard to get a, a perspective or, or a, you know, some context on how insanely big this nozzle is. It, the shape doesn't look right because of that barrel distortion because of the wide angle aspect of it. It's just really hard to, to kind of get that in your head of how, of what we're actually looking at there. So that's kind of why. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if not. Um, all right, we'll keep going here. Uh, Michael Burke, again, thank you so much. Uh, tears to your eyes landed a third time. Again, huge congratulations to SpaceX. You're, you're, proving, you're proving everyone wrong and you're proving yourselves right. That's absolutely awesome. Joshua M., when will I see you at Vandenberg Air Force Base? Would love to meet you in person. Joshua, I will. I need to make it out to a Vandenberg launch this year. I've never seen SpaceX or anyone else. I've seen a Delta II fly out of Vandenberg. That's my only Van Vandenberg launch, but I hesitate to say I saw it <laughs> because it was Vanden Fog, and all you end up seeing is uh, Foggenberg. So you really don't end up seeing anything. So I saw about this out at Vandenberg uh, that was for uh, OCO2, which was in like 24. 14, I think was my only launch I've seen at Vandenberg. Um, so I would love to go back out and, and actually properly catch a launch. So um, I will let you guys know when I do that. So yeah, green. Um, you're the only one I do these super tests. Well, well, thank you. I tried to go outside and watch it, but by the time I got it, it was already 280 kilometers in altitude. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to see when it's that far away. But thank you so much, green. Uh, Marcus, are you going to interview Elon? <sighs> well, I'm not done trying. I'll, I'll keep pushing a little bit, but I have had a lot of pushback from people on Twitter, from people on Reddit, saying that I'm being obnoxious and I'm pestering and uh, that I need to hold back, man. Like, he's getting annoyed. Uh, first off, as someone, humbly speaking, I have about 20,000 Twitter followers. I cannot keep up with what's in my feed. I miss stuff all the time. And yes, even if you've interacted with me before on Twitter, I still miss stuff literally all the time. Elon has like 23 million, million followers. His notifications would look, just you just see stuff flying by. Yes, he has interacted with me before. I still don't think, I, I'm sure he's seen my request for interviews because he's even interacted with a tweet that asked for an interview. But persistence pays, and I will at some. I will. I will keep going until we get an interview lined up with Elon. Um, but I also don't want to be pestering, so I'm taking a little bit of a step back. If you guys, my 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 fans and followers, do want an interview from Elon, ask him in the the comment section to sit down with me and maybe me and Scott Manley. I've heard a lot of people saying that'd be kind of a fun little roundtable. Scott Manley, everyday astronaut, and Elon Musk. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. So. Um, let's make that happen if you guys want. I, like I said, I'm going to kind of step back a little bit just so I don't err. I want to err on the side of persistent but not pestering. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. And thanks again, Marcus. Um, uh, going to make a KSP mod for your music. That's awesome. Uh, FRBE. That's great. Um, I, I have a lot of people asking if they can use my music. Um, I am in the camp of like, please do use it. Just please credit me on screen and in the description. Put a link to Spotify and iTunes. That makes me really happy when people want to use my music in their in their feeds and stuff. Um, it's a great way to share. How are you going to grow an audience unless it's being heard by people? Like that's the point of music is having people hear it. So uh, you have my explicit permission permission to please do use. I made it so that I, I think I'm new to the publishing music thing, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it will not get flagged by YouTube and other other services as being monetizable. So that means you are able to get. Uh, you still can use mon uh, monetization. It won't get a copyright strike against you if you use my music. I hope. Please let me know if that's not the case. It's supposed to be the case. I, I made it. I wanted it to be available for people to be able to use in those cases. So please, unless it's like a commercial application, you know, if you are a rocket company or you want to use it in like a commercial application, please then do reach out and we'll make sure we, we get some things figured out. But if you are a, a, per a private person making a cool video of, of Kerbal or something, Feel free. That's my gift to you, and thank you for considering it. So, yeah. Um, and Julian, 
how many lands do you think we'll see from this Falcon 9 core? Greetings from Argentina. Well, thank you, Julian. Um, I think this particular core, I would love to see this be the first one to, to land 10 times. You know, they're, they're aiming at 10 times without major refurbishment. They're at three. I wouldn't be surprised if that cadence picks up a lot more. And all of a sudden we start seeing this core fly every eight weeks and then every six and then every five and then every four weeks or something, you know, like the time frame getting smaller and smaller between flights. And I wouldn't be surprised if this one lands 10 times in the next couple of years. So yeah, I, I'm, that's awesome. Cody, I start working blue origin on the 17th. That is awesome. Love your content. We'll be taking advantage of your discount. That is great. Cody. Thank you for saying hi. Best of luck at Blue Origin. I cannot wait to see what you guys do. I'm really amped on Blue Origin right now. I'm finishing the script. I just finished it last night um, that I'm working on talking about. We got some nitty-gritty details out of New Glenn last week, so I'm finally able to actually properly compare it to other heavy lift launch vehicles. So that's coming out by the end of the week. Uh, I'm really excited. Blue Origin's very cool. Best of luck. Tell everyone they're hi. Um, Philip, thank you so much. And, Sh and Shadow, thank you. And Tim, when do you think we'll see 1046.4? I So that would be, for to translate, that would be, when will we see this core fly again? Um, the last one took from August. So what is that? Eight, so four months, almost three, four months. I want to see this get down to like one month. Um, we'll see. I would love to see it fly again in January. That might be a little a little too optimistic, but I, I think we'll see it fly again by February, hopefully. So we'll see. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, I, and then, and thank you, Tim and good name, by the way. And Ryu, 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 Achoo. I wonder, has SpaceX given any hints as to their refurbishing process and how much faster slash more efficient is it, is it getting? A third reflight is great, but it takes months to facilitate. Yeah. So just what we were talking about a second ago. Great question. Um, they have kind of talked about some of that stuff a little bit, uh, in the past, but they kind of just give hints. I've heard somewhere between like a thousand hours of refurbishment is, is currently required and they're trying to get it down to like 500 hours or something of actual inspection and refurbishment. And I think they're getting to, the, they're hoping to get even well below that even. I think block four was a thousand or something. And I, I don't know. These are, this might be totally wrong. Um, but yes, you're right. We don't have really hard numbers on a lot of the stuff and they don't owe us these hard numbers. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing these things flying much, much more rapidly um, as they get more and more confidence in their inspection, as they hone in on that inspection process, as they get new techniques, new, you know, new streamlined, re like almost like manufacturing, you know, they have to bring these things in, do some kind of scan on them and, and run a whole checklist. Hopefully that just gets more and more efficient the more and more they do it and they get more and more confident. Um, so hopefully, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. And, um, I, like I said, I would love to see this particular core fly again by February or within February. I think that would be awesome. That would be very, very cool. So I'm going to kind of stick around here for a little bit because I want to wait and see if they update us on the fairings. So again, uh, that was 17 minutes ago. I think they would have said something by now if they caught the fairing. Uh, for those of you curious, so they, they've tried a handful of times, probably like I think five attempts to catch the fairing. Uh, and I have a video again pretty much all about this that'll be coming out as soon as they actually do catch a fairing. Um, and it's kind of talking about why can they use parachutes for the fairing and not the booster? And that's a great question. But the, the biggest thing is really uh, surface area. So the fairing is a giant empty shell. It's lightweight, large surface area. It can come in and survive re-entry um, because it's, you know, it's surface, it's surface area to, to mass is, it has a lot of surface area, low weight, as opposed to a 20 ton booster uh, that is very streamlined, pencil shaped, and very heavy, very dense. So that needs to slow itself down uh, even before it hits the atmosphere. A fairing is so light; think of it like a feather or a, a leaf falling out of a tree. Um, it can handle it. It can it can manage to fall without needing that. And then uh, a parachute is doesn't need to be that big of a parachute. Or in this in this tense, it's actually a parafoil technically because it's not a parachute. It is steerable. Uh, so it's a parafoil. And uh, it doesn't need to be that big because the mass of the, of the fairing is already so low. So they've been working on dropping these from a helicopter at like 10,000 feet, which is, uh, what, 3,000 meters or so. Um, working on really honing in on how to, because it's really that last little bit. You know, they know approximately where, they're really pretty accurately where it will be falling and, and re-entering at, you know, because it's following its ballistic trajectory until it gets into that atmosphere. And then there's going to be some atmospheric conditions that can move it around. So SpaceX, and that's just in the last, you know, 
the last 10,000 meters is really where the atmosphere starts to get some, <clears throat> some, some grit, you know? Think about like flying in an airplane and you hit turbulence. There's a lot of wind shears and a lot of different variables up there at that, you know, around 10,000, 15,000 meters. Um, and then from there on down, there's a lot of potentially a lot of potential atmospheric movement. So that's where they're having to really hone in and learn how to guide these things through those conditions. Not only that, because they only can do so much when you're talking about something with that much surface area, with that much lift and glide and hang time, that's going to get blown around a lot by the wind. Um, so the boat, Mr. Steven, has to be fast, which it is. Uh, and it has to be nimble, which it is, and it has to know approximately where this thing's drifting and, and try to land itself underneath. So by practicing the last 3,000 meters, they're hopefully getting some really good practice catching it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, I, I talk a lot about that in this upcoming video. So yeah, hopefully that helps you guys understand that. Um, and Plastic Pinocchio, Vega is already in service with 13 out of 13 launches nailed. The methane engine is slated to launch by 2024. So this is the same Vega rocket that we're talking about. The Vega is a solid rocket booster for the first stage. Are they talking about replacing it with a methane engine and they're still going to call it the same launcher? Okay. Touche. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, I know about the Vega rocket, but I was curious why, I, why that was now going to be a methane rocket. Um, Neuropilot wants to know if I'm going to put up the NASA feed up. Um, I don't have plans to do a NASA feed today. I've got a lot of work to do today, guys. Uh, I, I want to get these videos. There's going to be like three videos coming out in the next, uh, hopefully within like the next week and a half from now. So, whoo. Uh, and from, uh, our friend Volvacat here, SpaceX should launch over, SpaceX should launch over land. First stage can land itself. Fairings also easier without a ship. No more dangerous debris. I... 100% disagree. Um, that is just never, honestly, a good idea to fly over populated areas. SpaceX, sure, they have great reliability. They've, they've been proving themselves over and over. But don't forget, it was only, what, 2015, three years ago, when they experienced a, a launch failure mid-flight of CRS-7. That would have caused debris landing potentially on people's houses. That's just not good. The, the, there's not that much advantage. There's really almost no advantage to them landing or launching over land. They already have the launch launch infrastructure, including t ground tracking stations when they're launching out of Vandenberg Air Force Base, when they're launching out of Kennedy Space Center. Um, there's just no reason to launch over people. Why even risk it um, when rockets still are not as reliable as something like an airplane? Um, but hopefully someday we do get there. And uh, just like the early days of, of aviation, you know, you were pretty risky. If you were on the very first commercial airliners, you had a pretty <laughs> low chance of survivability. And nowadays it's the safest form of travel, basically. Um, you have a you don't you don't even think twice when you get on an airplane. They're just so safe, so reliable. Um, and eventually, you know, with enough engineering, with enough data, with enough launch cadence, eventually rockets, in theory, why can't? Yes, they're complicated, but so are airplanes. Why can't they become um, as reliable? So, so yeah. Um, let's see. SpaceX. Yeah, we got that one. Chris Harris, NASA stream is live. Um, there, let me just check on that real quick. I'll see what we're – is it just the docking or what, what are we looking at here today for NASA? Because they always have a live stream up. Um, NASA, let's pull this up and see what they're doing. NASA. Okay, I'll, I'll put this up in the background. This is fun. Uh, yeah, because that's crazy that just this morning uh, people did leave Earth, and now they are up there on the station. So, um, Michael Burke flying overland maybe in 20 years. I agree with that. I agree with that idea. Look at that. Look at the Soyuz. Two Soyuz capsules up there. One has a hole in it. <laughs> Hopefully this one doesn't, but they're both safe. I'm glad to see uh, the Soyuz getting back uh, safely into, into flight. This is good news for the International Space Station. This is very, very good news for the International Space Station. If they didn't get this crew rotation going, it would have been in pretty big trouble. So thank you. Thank you, Rose Cosmos, for getting us back back up there. That's very, very vital to the survivability and the, and the future of the International Space Station. Um, this is good because if we had problems, if this didn't happen in the next couple months, the we would have probably seen a really big delay in the commercial crew program and i do not want to see a big de they may there's even i mean this is very far out there this is like after a hundred different other problems going wrong there could have been the small chance that potentially the international space station would have major problems if it wasn't crewed and, and they were not able to do uh, proper maintenance on it where it could have been un 
it would have been a destination that would be undockable and, and ungoableness too. So I'm really glad to see it back online um, and, and getting a proper crew rotation in here. So this hopefully has no delays and no... Because we're going to be seeing DM1 hopefully launching the first cr uh, crew dragon, but without people on it in January already. And it needs to have people on station to do that. And uh, yeah, so now the crew that's on board will be able to do that. So yes, this is big. This is good. So um, Christoph, you're from Austria and learn English with your videos. Well, thank you. That's very cool. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, best of luck learning English. Uh, I wish I was smart enough to learn other languages i know like the smallest amount of of uh smallest amount of spanish and about 10 words in german so yeah best of luck and thank you for tuning in mary smith i love i love that students had involvement in this launch i would i would love to have elon uh would have had that kind of opportunity also please don't give give them getting an interview with elon that would be the best thing ever well thank you mary and thank you for your continued support um yeah it is really 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 cool um, yeah, I, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep on the Elon thing, but I might try some different angles, but Twitter, the thing with Twitter is that it is a really, uh, a really good way of getting his attention. And it really, if I were to go through SpaceX or through Tesla or something to try to interview him, they just be, they get that a hundred times a day. They just have to say, no, the only way you get an interview with Elon Musk is him saying, yeah. And then boom, all of a sudden behind the scenes, a bunch of people will oh, brr, brr, make it happen. So um, that is really the only way to get an interview with him is out of his mouth. So Twitter's probably my best chance of doing that. So we'll see. Um, they changed to parachutes early on the process. Um, yeah, so is January still on? I heard there was a change to parachutes. Uh, yeah. Oh, Andy, I think you're talking about they're, um, so in our Discord, they're talking about the parachutes. They, there's some kind of issue for certifying the parachutes. And it wasn't necessarily the parachutes. It was actually the, the cutter, the thing that cuts the parachutes free. Um, there's only one certified provider, and they're having issues getting enough of these cord cutters, basically, for the parachutes, I think. Um, yeah, and so now... Um, now they're working on, on getting new certifications going with new providers of, of cord cutters so that they can continue and, and hopefully fly with parachutes here soon and, and get that all certified for human flight. So, yeah. Um, Soyuz uh, MS-11 joins STS-26, STS-114 as we turn to flight missions. Good call, Richard. I like that. Um, let's see. Something uh, – let's see. Do they successfully recover the phrase? We're still waiting to hear. Uh, right now we're – we could probably switch back over to – the Twitter feed and just kind of pay attention to that for a second here. Um, we still don't have any word on the fairings guys. So nothing updated yet. So why don't you guys go ahead and tune into uh, the SpaceX Twitter while you're at it, make sure and follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm unfortunately at er day astronaut E R <laughs> E R day. Uh, Cause every day doesn't fit, but if you search every day astronaut, you'll find me on Twitter. Um, give me a little follow. Um, yeah, stay tuned. We got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm going to get ready to sign out here. Like I said, I've got a lot of stuff going on today. Um, Mr. Steven is moving fast. Ooh, can someone link the Mr. Steven tracking the maritime tracker thing? Um, yeah. Next space flight posted a Mr. St next, next space flight posted a Mr. Steven update. Um, I would love to see. Un poco espanol por tu? There you go. That's all I got. <laughs> I think I did that right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Very bad. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to head out. I am working on this, finishing up the script. I want to shoot this thing today, um, Blue Origin. Then we're going to have more canceled video, canceled Space Flight hardware coming out very soon. And then we're also going to have a video when they do catch a fairing. I will have a video out hopefully within 24 hours of that since it's all done. Um I, they can't the fairings would have had it come down by now right i don't think it's like a huh yeah we'll find out here uh marine traffic.com there we go I'll, I'll see if i can just pull this up real quick here um this is mr steven it's just kind of zipping around right now <laughs> it's crazy we can see this um but yeah this doesn't really tell us if they have anything on board um it is still driving around yeah 
I don't know. We'll I'll pay attention to the SpaceX Twitter. Oh, you guys can't even see that. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is this is the marine tracker.com. This is Mr. Steven. It's currently about this far away from land. Huh? Ta-da. Man, it is downrange. Isn't that crazy? So it launched from here. And uh yeah, this is where Mr. Steven is, and it'll eventually come back up here. Um Yeah. But like I said, let's just pay attention to the SpaceX Twitter. They will be doing updates, including hopefully updates on the fairing if it's successful. I'm sure they'll be excited to share if it was successful. So let's tune in there. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll be back here tomorrow already, so don't miss me too much. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to to talk about tomorrow too. It's an exciting resupply mission to the International Space Station. Um, the booster will be landing. Here, let's take a look at my pre-launch preview for this mission. Haha, <laughs> like I said, I want to get you guys... I want to get you guys uh, tuned into this. So pre-launch preview, we can click here. Um, this will show it in your local time too, 23 hours, and then it'll show, uh, or yeah, your local time there if you hover over it. Uh, I, I need a quick shout out to some of the people that help me with this stuff. Uh, John Eric uh, helps a lot by making sure all these articles are up to date, uh, or John Rumpf, uh, and uh, and also Ol Matthias also helps all the programming of this stuff. Look at this. This is crazy. I didn't, I'm not smart enough to make this stuff work. I have really smart people that are able to help me and make it so we have valuable resources like this. So if you want to check out the pre-launch preview for CRS 16, you just click on this and this will give you that plain and simple rundown on what's going on. It looks like my website might be getting slammed right now. It's normally not the slow. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, but yeah, just bookmark everydayastronaut.com. We have news and we also have those pre-launch previews. Man, my site is getting slammed. Sorry about that, everybody, uh, which is good. That's why the, the shop is now hosted on a different place because it was always getting slammed and then would crash. <laughs> but um, here we go. Pre-launch preview. CRS 16. So this is all the stuff. Um, it will be uh, landing at LZ1. So now you can see. So when you're like, hey, is this one landing? Yes. Yes, this one is landing. Uh, will it be landing? Where will it be landing? It'll be landing at LZ1 um, on land. So, yeah, there is no fairing because it's a dragon capsule. All those things you always ask me, like, where is this one launching from? Is this a reused booster? Look, you can see here um, the Block 5 serial. So this is a brand new booster, 10.50.1. So there you go. Everything you need to know right here, pre-launch previews. Um, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, <laughs> it, it's dead. Uh, thank you, Chris. Whoa, Christopher. Love the channel. Keep up the awesome work. Holy cow. Thank you so much. That is insanely generous of you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, on behalf of, of Christopher, thank you. That is very, very nice. Uh, everyone say thank you to Christopher. Uh, you help make me do what I do, which is stay up very late scripting and working and trying to keep all this stuff together. I think in 2019, my goal is I will probably have a full-time uh, assistant of some kind they might be some kind of editor they might be some kind of shop runner and also website runner or something i gotta start get i'm working way too much lately um i still love it i still especially videos like videos is is uh you know what i love to work on so uh I, i'll need to have some help in the near future if you happen to live in the midwest and would be open to i do want a local contributor so if you're in the midwest i live in northeast iowa if you have any interest in living in Northeast Iowa and you have expertise and experience editing videos, uh, if you're very involved in spaceflight and maybe have some WordPress experience, reach out to me, guys. Um, I'd be interested in, in talking to you. And you don't necessarily have to live in the Midwest, but uh, you know, if you're open to living in Cedar Falls, Iowa, I might have a job for you next year, so do stay tuned. Um, Christopher, holy cow! Jeez! Wow! Thank you. Dang. Thank you so much, Christopher. That, uh, wow. Uh, so everyone say thank you again to Christopher. Thank you so much. That, that really, really, really means a lot. Well, that's a great note to end on. Holy cow. Thank you, Christopher. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm blushing now. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. Uh, again, remember, if you are a aerospace, uh, you work in the aerospace industry, do remember, I do have 25% off of you for apparel as a thank you for all your hard work. Um, just click this link. It'll, you'll have to submit your work email through there. It will not, like, 
ever be used in any way other than just to send you a link. It's a way of verifying where you work. There will be no spam. You're not on any kind of list. It's literally just a ping to go ping pong and therefore send you to verify that you do work in the aerospace industry. Um, click that link there. That is as a thank you to you. We got some new shirts coming out, um, new shirts online. Lots of fun things, guys, just in time for the holidays. These will be back in stock, I think, this week. So check back if you want um, those mini moons. Um, so, yeah, thank you, guys. And thank you, Daniel, <laughs> for your, your support as well. Um, thanks, guys. We'll see you here back here tomorrow, almost the same time. Stay tuned. I'll have the, uh, the new live stream up. I'm working on some new things, hoping to make sure you guys. Chris Harris, holy cow. Guys, it's not even it's not even the holiday season. What are you doing? Thank you. Sneaking it in there at the last minute from Chris. And Christopher. What are you guys doing to me? This is ridiculous. Thank you, but it's absolutely not necessary. Thank you so much. Um I, if you want to spend money, do it in the store. Get some cool stuff for yourself. Wear it around and have fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's not necessary, but thank you. That really means a lot. Uh, I'm going to get back to work now, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Everyone say thank you to everybody. That's crazy. And Andrew, guys, stop. Thank you, Andrew Allen. Jeez. Thank you. Uh... I'm speechless now. I feel like now I need to just sit here and say thank you so... And Okay. Jeez. What is going on? Holy crap. Did you just win the lottery or something, Christopher? Thank you so much. Uh... Jeez. <laughs> yeah, uh, this does. I'm starting to feel like a cam girl right now. You're exactly right. Uh, please stop. We'll tune in tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. Uh, that's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Thank you, Bradley. Enjoy the tunes. Find them on iTunes and Spotify. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sincerely. Thank I'm speechless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.